What's up? I'm Billy Hume, and I got a little story for you. When I was young, I had a false sense of myself, and that was because when I started playing music, I had a small studio in my parents' basement where everybody would come over and record, and I was the ringleader. I was the one rallying everybody together to do something. And after high school, I built a home studio near Atlanta called The Zone. I started out with a four track, moved to an eight track, and soon after that, moved to a 16 track. At that time, this was like the mid 80s. I was like some kind of hero for doing this because because good home studios where you could record a full band were kind of uncommon back then. And of course, I'm, you know, recording my bands, having band rehearsals, bringing clients in, and I was actually making pretty good recordings too. So everybody was like, oh, Billy, you're the, you're the genius. Yeah, you know, people would actually call me Little Mozart, which I'd be like, oh, ho, ho, which is kind of funny to think now because I don't really know anything about music theory, but I know how to put it all together. So in my world, I was the most driven, accomplished guy around. And there seemed to be this idea in everybody's head and my head that I was the chosen one. I was going to go on and get a record deal and be a big star. I, I totally believe that stuff. So I did all that for 10 years. And even though I'd been getting a lot of airplay on WRES, which was a very influential college station here in Atlanta, which actually led to some meetings with some record labels, nothing was happening. My career wasn't moving ahead. I was just like, <laughs> what? Why isn't this happening? What am I doing wrong? Somebody please tell me I, I need to learn the answer. And the answer actually came through the unlikely events that led to me meeting Bone Crusher, Lil Jon, and Rick Beato, which is too complicated of a story to get into right now. But the bottom line is that I was so desperate to find anybody to work with that had done anything, that had some momentum. And even though I, I didn't understand rap music, to me it was like, oh, it's this thing that goes boom as it goes by in the car. I didn't know anything about that, but these guys seemed really driven. I liked them a lot, but frankly, to be honest with you, I thought all that rap stuff was just fucking bullshit because I'm the musician. I write these songs. we got instruments, these intellectual songs. These guys, what are they doing? They're talking over a beat, whatever. But I liked them. They had some money. They're moving forward. I'll work with them. And Rick, oh my God, Rick intimidated the hell out of me. It, to be honest with you, I thought the guy was on drugs or coke the first couple times I met him because he was just so wired up and, and he's not. He doesn't, he doesn't do anything. I don't, I don't even think he drinks alcohol. He's just literally the most energetic person I'd ever met in my life. But even though he kind of scared me, he had had a publishing deal and I think he had had a record deal. And uh, But I was like, I'll, I'll just, I'll do it. I'll work with them because I just wanted to move ahead. So I started working with these guys. And right off the bat, for the first time in my life, I was scrambling. I mean, these guys worked and 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 worked. I always thought we were working hard. We'd like record a couple vocals and some guitar parts. And I was like, oh man, we're killing it. Like we're working hard. No, these people worked 12, 14 hour sessions every single day. One time Rick looks at me and he says, Billy, it's a numbers game. And that really hit me because I always thought that you just needed this one song to break through, which is actually kind of true. But you don't know which song that's going to be. You don't know who it's going to be with. You got to do a lot of work with a lot of people, record and write a lot of songs, do a lot of gigs for anything to happen. And I remember Little John would come in in the early days with his briefcase and sit there and read contracts and statistical demographic stuff that radio stations got. And I was like, oh, an artist can read a contract? And I started recording bass and guitar on a lot of the rap tracks. So I'd sit there and I'd do the first take and everybody be like, oh, that's really cool. You know, that's great. And I'd be like, it's a little out of tune. It's a little off beat. Like, I know better. You're like, I'm the music guy. Like, I'll do some more. And they'd politely be like, oh, OK, yeah, I'll go ahead and do some more takes. And I'd do multiple takes till I got it all perfect. And then they'd be like, hey, man, that's good. But could we listen to that first take again? And be like, yeah. And I'd go back and it'd be like, damn. That was the take. Like, yeah, I was a little out of tune, a little off beat, but that was the feel. I'd never thought about just taking the first take before. And then there was this time where Rick was working with a band and they came in kind of just in regular street clothes. And Rick, you know, he's got some opinions and he looks at them and says, why are you dressed like that? You should be dressed like you're on stage. And they're like, why? And he's like, look, if you're going to do this, you need to take all the clothes that you own and burn them except for the ones you wear on stage and dress like that every day. You need to be in this thing. And I thought that's kind of that's kind of over the top. But as I got into it more, <laughs> I realized what he was saying is like, 
This isn't a part-time job. This isn't something where you go, I'm clocking in. I'm the rock star now. No, you need to live this thing. If you're going to do this thing, there's a level of commitment where you've got to like, you got to commit. You got to go out there. You got to live it every day, every moment of the day. Definitely the rap guys were doing that because what other choice did some of these guys have? I've got, I've got, I've got so many stories about all these people in those times. But things were happening that were making me start to have this realization like, like this guy would come in and have a business card and be like, I'm a CEO. And I'm like, yeah, whatever, man. Like, you don't look like no CEO to me. But a year later, he'd have a distribution deal or he had invented a distribution deal. Or the one time I was working with Rick and he says to me, Billy, you're clueless. And I probably would have just blown that off. But by that time, I realized he was right. All this time, I'd had this false sense of myself. I was the dumbest person in all these groups of people. And it was, <laughs> it was like really very humiliating. I found myself humiliated a lot. Not that anybody was being mean to me, but just because I just didn't know what was going on. I did good work, but it was tough because I realized I'd been living this freaking fantasy, like this idea about myself, who I thought I was, what I thought I was. I was completely wrong. And that was hard, but... I was learning. I was <laughs> I was learning some stuff, and it was happening at a really fast pace. For instance, from Rick it was, first things first, the frequency chart. No moving on till the fundamentals are solid. Song, structure, rhythm section, vibe, how music industry people think. Stacking harmonies. From Bone it was, start with a platinum concept. How to write catchy hooks. What is the pocket? How the business works. From Little John, it was dragging the hi-hats, breaking the rules, read and understand your contracts, listen to your mix in the car, listen to your mix in the car, listen to your mix in the car again, bring food and drinks to the session, treat everyone well, and working hard and having fun can go together. Working in rap taught me more about music than anything I've worked on, and all of these people taught me about the heart and soul of creativity. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. And over the next few years, there were other people that had a huge influence on me and to this day are still teaching me things. But the bottom line is this. If you're walking around thinking you got it all figured out, you got all the talent, you got all the confidence, but yet things aren't working out for you, maybe the problem is you. On the other hand... You might not feel like you're talented enough. You might not have all the knowledge you need. You might not think that you're smart enough, but that can be a great thing because that way you know what you need to learn. All you got to do is be the dumbest person in the room. I mean, look at me. I'm an idiot. <laughs>